Welcome, my beautiful souls. Something is telling me to check my volume real quick. Okay. Um, welcome, guys. This is going to be uh, part two of the reading I started yesterday, where I'm doing each sign. Um, and it's definitely relating to the Universal Year 9 we're about to move into, um, 2025. So I'm not really doing like a year in review, re -review, uh, review. I will do those. This is a, like a glimpse into um, what the Universal Year 9 means for you, you know. Um, I did a, I did a, it's like an eight minute video. Uh, it's really a podcast um, where I re I broke down the Universal Year 9 and you know, what it means for the collective, because it's universal. Um, so I definitely check that out, and I will link it. It's a short video, well, at least for me, it's a short video. So I will link it either in the comment section somewhere so that you can find it. Um, I think it'd be a good idea to know what a universal year nine really is calling for. Definitely healers. Healers, it's like call to attention um but anyway you'll you'll hear all that in the video i don't want to repeat the video it'll just take too much time so anyways uh yesterday i did aries to virgo and um last the last time i did this i ran out of time and um well actually the last time i left a sign out which i couldn't believe it so I had it, I did their own little video. Um, well, it was like almost two hours long though. And um, this time I thought I left Leo out or someone said you left Leo out, but I just left the time stamp out. So these will be time stamped by the way. Uh, so anyway, so this is, this is again, 2025 for you, your sign, what it, you know, potentially is calling for. It's a glimpse into the future, so to speak. Um, I'm going to use a couple different decks. Matter of fact, I may continue to change like the main deck throughout the signs. Um, you know, just when I feel it, like it's time for a change. I did bring out the Romance Angels, um, just in case love comes into the picture. And um, we are going to take a clarifier over each card. So what I'm doing is I'm taking three cards and um, then a clarifier over them and then more if needed. Um, if it speaks of love, then I'm going to bring in the romance angels, you know, see what it's speaking of. Um, I have everyone's major arcana in order. So Libra. You're going to be first. Justice is your major arcana. You know, balance. If your life feels unbalanced, you feel unbalanced. Um, Scorpio, it's like, I need to know when to close doors. It's just going to be a part of my life. But it but it means transformation. I feel like every door you close behind you, it's like one level higher. So it's a good thing. Um, Sagittarius, like, uh, temperance, divine timing, but also learning the art of patience. Not easy for a fire sign, and I could go on. But anyway, that's your major arcana. So that's just going to let me know where we're at. Um, but I am going to also bring in the major arcanas. And um, just what I'm going to do is actually take off the top of the deck. So um, I should probably just show you instead of talk about it. So, let's go ahead and calm your minds. You know, I always connect to my guides. So I want to make sure my mind is calm. Smell roses, like fresh roses. Hmm. Why? It smells good. Get a couple more drinks of my coffee.
and let's begin. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give everything a shuffle as we go along. Um, but just know that everything is pre-shuffled. I spend a lot of time making sure the decks that I, you know, that I'm going to use in a reading that they are, number one, I make sure everything's in the upright. And then I just shuffle. And really, it's like, it puts me in a meditative state. So I kind of love shuffling. It's like, shut up and shuffle. All right, let me bring the lid down too much and let's begin so Libra you know you care about what's fair and just in the world it's important to you and I feel like that sword um, I don't feel like you know you only use it for yourself. I feel like you use it for others. It's like bringing balance to the world. Um, you know, this is going to be, 2025 is going to be an interesting year. And um, so I feel like that sword is going to be needed. But I feel like for others, like again, that calling. We have the chariot. Chariot. Well, wow, that's good news. That really speaks about unlimited potential. Um, you know, the chariot is driven by your seeds of intention. So really, like what you believe, what you can see in your mind's eye will be, can be, right? But I got to know that. I got to believe that. I got to put effort behind that. And then the chariot really represents like, you know, there is no limit. Why put a limit on it? You know what I mean? It make it, it could take you, and you know, 2025, it is like we're deep, we're we're diving into deeper realms, and I feel that in this energy. I don't know why, but I do. Um, but I probably feel it more for you. So, you know, to me, that's good news. All right, let's give the true dreams, and I'm not going to shuffle every time. Um, I am going to shuffle the first time. Let's do one more. So I like that. I like that you have the chariot. Um, you know, and the chariot, I think it's a cancer card, so it's nurturing. It's loving. Uh, you know, it is the, really, both speak of balance. Um, one is balance, like, again, what's fair and just for you and for the world. Um, justice really is about making you whole again. And the chariot can be the balance of the masculine and the feminine within us, the light and the dark, right? But I'm not hiding any of them. You know, I am who I am, who I am. And that is balance. You know, I'm noticing this beautiful rainbow behind them. So. What's that saying? The light now. It's going to say the light at the end of the tunnel. And that could be. All right. Well, let's see. We have the Page of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles. Um, you know, when I see the Page of Pentacles, first thing that comes to my mind is that this path, at least part of the path, was about knowledge, right? Gaining knowledge, becoming wiser. Um, could be even in book smart, you know what I mean? Like intelligent but also like wisdom, spiritual, like they're all alive. Just like I felt here where, where like the masculine, the feminine, the shadow, the light, I know them all. This is probably what I've been learning. I say me, I mean you. Um, can certainly be also a younger um, 
Earth sign, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Doesn't have to be though. Ace of Swords. Hello. You know, this isn't just any sword. This is like truth. It's interesting because there's a saying I've had in my mind, and it's and it's something about um you know trying to it's like the rich man with all his material wealth or what have you, right? He's trying to get into heaven and he's got all everything tied to his camel. Um, but he's gotta go through the eye of the needle. And uh, that means he can't bring that along. Why am I thinking of this? I'm seeing the eye of the needle. But anyways, it's definitely truth. Like, undeniable. Um, can certainly be communication. And if it is some type of communication, then I do feel like truth within that. All right, we have... The Queen of Cups. Come right under Cancer. Hmm. Feels like ring ring. How are you been? What have you been doing? Interesting because the Queen of Cups is looking towards the future. I do kind of feel the majority of you are also the Queen. Um, and that's just how I read. Like, I feel like you're really everyone, unless I feel it differently. But I am feeling that, that the majority, that you are the Queen of Cups. And it could talk about, like, something coming in, some type of communication. You know, and maybe because I talk so much about your major arcana and using that sword, maybe you use that sword. You know, and I feel like when we learn to use the sword of justice... It just makes us lighter and lighter and lighter. And I feel freer. You know what I mean? Like the weight of the world is not on me. And the chariot just feels like, you know, I lift. I just lift naturally. So anyway, I feel like it's coming from this page. Let's go ahead and... Bring in the Guild of Chiro. You know, this queen ultimately has a cup in her hand. So it's almost like there's this communication and then this cup is given. But we'll see if it's a page. It could talk about, you know, and it may talk about both. Like, you know, you've really been learning. Um... Maybe to, you know, really bring out that, first of all, being strong and using that sword where needed. And I feel like that's first. But then I feel like, and then coming to a place where I allow myself to feel, you know, like, like emotions, whatever it may be. All right. Hmm. With the eight pentacles over the page, some of you could be someone you know that you work with. We have the three of pentacles over the ace of swords. And then we have interesting two queens, queen of pentacles with the queen of cups. This is great energy of collaborating with someone. I mean, really good energy. If, you know, like I'm in the market uh, looking for a partner um, who thinks a lot like I do, and they don't have to, like, think just like I do. I mean, that wouldn't serve you. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it's, like, where we can bounce ideas off of each other. Um So, I don't know, but I feel like, um, you know, let's say this is a same-sex relationship. Well, then, like, 
work together. I feel like you could work together and, you know, no matter what, I feel there's this energy of being able to collaborate with someone. And that doesn't have to mean that I'm making a, like, you know, like you're my partner. It just may be like a moment of collaboration. Queen of Pentacles, I feel like, uh, uh-uh, it's my baby. You know, like this is my baby. So interesting. But I also get this feeling of like, you know, remembering, like in the Eight of Pentacles, it is about starting something new. Um, something, you know, it can be an old business, like, of course. You know, with the page, could be someone that you used to work with or went to school with, you learned with. Because in the Eight of Pentacles, you're really learning. Um, but the Eight of Pentacles also represents, you know, being willing to be the apprentice in something. You know, your interest might be piqued. And I feel like follow that. Follow that because it feels natural. And, um, you know, maybe you do collaborate. And again, I, I don't really, you know, it can be a partner. But I feel like there's no one different than the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. Now, if they work together, that would be great. But if they're not seeing eye to eye, then they don't see eye to eye. But anyways, um, there's a recognition you know, of you, of your individuality, your truth, you know, it's you coming under this ace of swords. And it, it is a recognition. That's what it means. It's recognition. It's recognition and reward. You know, why? Because you're being you. You're doing what feels right to you. And, um... I just feel like it makes you happy. Now, this may be something that's new, right? It may be a spark of an idea. I would say follow it. Libra, your reading is long. I want to take one more. We have the strength card. Strength card looking back. It could definitely be the energy of helping others to heal in some way, overcome the things you yourself have overcome. Um, doesn't have to mean everything. Again, that energy of like, you know, if like I have healer, if I feel I'm a healer, um, that feels again called into action. You know, and I feel when the strength card comes up, it really speaks about your courage. Hmm. Like your courage to maybe allow a new beginning. We have the Page of Cups. Interesting. So now we have the Page of Cups and the Page of Pentacles. Two pages. Mm, three of Swords. Look at that. 33. I'm telling you guys, it follows me. And then Six of Pentacles. That's kind of what I felt between these two queens. Now, these queens can be like a female and a male, you know, you could just be both are in like feminine energy type energy, but something in the Six of Pentacles can be definitely unbalanced. You know, it's a very compassionate, empathetic type energy. And honestly, I feel like, let's say the queens are really you, one person then I feel like it's like coming to terms or really appreciating, maybe I should say, like these different sides of you and not like, you know, not shut them down. Kind of like the Empress's energy, right? I'm loving and nurturing, but I'm gentle as a lamb, but I'm powerful and strong. You know what I mean? And we have all you know, the 33. Well, now we have another three. Or is there... No, 33. So anyways, it definitely feels like, you know, something um, 
caused heartache. You know what I like here is I feel like there's an evolution. This does kind of feel like someone may um, reach out out of the blue. And um, let's just put it this way. If things were unbalanced at that time and therefore caused heartache in some way. Um, but this is something that, you know, you feel like you would you would at least give it a moment. Um, because I feel like it's evolution also, right? It's the evolution. It's, you know, we were pages, now we're queens. How interesting that the two pages are the same as the two queens. Wow. So that should give you a clue. All right, let's do the romance angels. Holy crap, Libra, your reading is long. I have a feeling they're all going to be long. But I got to make sure I can get them in one video. All right. The reason why I do that anytime I'm bringing them into a new reading, um, it's really simple for me and my guides that, you know, first of all, I'm introducing them into the reading. Like, give us your wisdom. We have keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Mm. Could be someone like you really don't expect, but it does say soulmate. Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Hello. <clears throat> it's like a soulmate, right? Because your soulmate may differ from your usual type. But you know, this could be like an old friend. Um, maybe you use that sword and um, it got the ball rolling. You know, I feel like this is really covering like money and love. But it feels like love is just beginning. You know, or when it open when it does come in, it's not about like let's rush this. Let's let's get to know each other. Let's get to know each other. You know what I mean? Like, let's make it romantic. Okay. Libra, holy cow. You know, when a reading is long, I feel like it's because you need it long. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I try not to put any expectations about the length. Because I feel like when it runs long, it's just meant to. Okay. Scorpio. Scorpio. Let's begin. Oh. Excuse me. Um... What I want to do is every time we use one, we're going to put it back, but we're going to shuffle. It says Scorpio. Transformation. You know, sometimes I feel like it's forced upon you. Um, but I feel like that's where you find your strength. It's like, holy shit. I didn't think I could get through this, but I did. Holy shit. You know, and the more that you do go through certain things, I feel like the more stronger you become. Wow, you got a lot. Um, I'm taking them. We have the magician looking right over at the death card. Look at that. He's like, when are you closing that door? When is the time? You know... Wow, because there must it must relate to like some door that needs closed. Um, and it can even be an energetic door. You know what I mean? It's just allowing. I feel like that's what it is. Like maybe closing the energy to not allowing and moving into the allowing. Doesn't have to mean anything quick. I don't know. Let's keep going. The Empress. Some of you may be a single mom. 
um, you know, but the Empress is, you know, just what I said earlier, loving, nurturing, um, powerful. She knows who she is. She's someone who's creative. And um, she uses that creativity, you know, and for whatever it may be, it's interesting. I feel like, you know, something is like kind of holding this up. All right, we have the strength card. And then, hello, lovers. Hello, lovers. You know, it feels like if you don't open yourself up to, well, it's mirroring the lovers, then so be it, right? It's your choice. But, you know, the one thing about the Empress is just like you, you, you need you, this is you know part of I feel like your soul's lesson is learning like you know when it's over when something's over when something has run its course right but it's not giving up it's about the next adventure you know what's new what's next um you know I see the infinity sign as above so below so that makes me feel like destined right and then the lovers hello and interesting they're just like barely touching fingers you know what i mean like it feels like the beginning of like oh like we touch and there's this electricity but it's just the beginning hmm interesting i feel like that's going to move quickly <laughs> all right Let's go ahead and bring in the Trail of Dreams. We have the Nine of Pentacles. I like that. This talks about successful self-employment. Um, you know, but let's say you're a single mom with the mother card here. You know, you could be one who, like, you know, takes care of you, but also takes care of your family. This is a great omen of, like, seeing the fruits of your labor. It's corresponding right with the universal year nine. So I wouldn't be surprised if like, well, I, like I feel like number one, if it's something like ideas, creativity, you know, something in that area. Um, but then I also feel like the grind of like the nine to five, but somehow, some way I feel like things are just getting better like you're becoming more abundant this is really an independent energy and um you know and it's not about like i'm independent like i don't mean it in a way of like i allow nothing else I mean it in a way of like, I know that I can take care of me. And there's a certain feeling with that. You know what I mean? And then let's say, let's say love. Like, because it feels like what you've been focusing on is your money. Um, but it feels right. This is like coming to harvest time almost. Um, but maybe now it's time to crack that emotional shell. Okay, let's keep going. We have the Queen of Swords. And then look at this, the Four of Wands. No wonder I felt this energy of like cracking open door in a way. It's like just enough to let like a stream of light to come in and then eventually it's going to be flooded with light you know this is the marriage card and it's interesting how i really read the empress as um and i know it's not everyone but it, because it's really about her energy but can also talk about like the mother um and then it's by a one so to me it could be singular um but 
the lovers is here. And there's two people there. It's funny, I was watching, um, or no, I read, it was just like this quick little like astrology thing, and it was for each sign. Um, and it was about like planets that are, I don't know, going to, I think Mars is going into retrograde. I don't even know. Um, because there's a couple things happening and it was, and it was the 12, 12, actually today's the 12th. Wow. Um, interesting. Anyways, it talked about, um, uh, for each sign and I read Scorpios and it spoke about love, love, love. Um, like it was so positive. So anyway. Anyway, you know, independent energy, singular energy, coupled energy, singular energy, coupled energy. You know, the Four of Wands is about making a true commitment. And first and foremost, yes, making that commitment to yourself, you know, to like grow your money, manifest your ideas. Um, you know, speak your truth, not be, af not be afraid to speak up. And I'm not talking about yelling or screaming. I'm talking just about speaking your truth. Um, that's partly what the queen here is learning is like the art of communication. But some of you, I could see you like using your voice within what you do. Um. And then, boom, the marriage card. How interesting. I mean, like, how out of the blue, in a way. All right. Let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. Mm, that's why I was talking about <clears throat> where I felt like, you know, at least allowing a beam of light to come in. This is why. Um, but, you know, in a way, I, I see you like building your pentacles, your money, um, your career. You know, I see it only getting better and better. So, you know, I don't feel like you've been wasting any time. Maybe you, you purposely, I've been getting that a lot lately. Like I purposely put love off. You know, because there was things that I wanted to do or I needed to do, maybe. Um, but I feel like the time is calling now for your, for you to let down these walls. You know, it is an eight, so it is a new beginning. But, you know, this is someone that, yes, you may have started like, you know, because I want to concentrate on my career. Um. I feel like maybe, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like it's time to put these walls down. It's a sense of freedom. And freedom is what you deserve here. You know, coming into the Nine of Pentacles. You know, no matter where you're at there, let's just say you're just beginning. Uh, I feel like this is a period of time where you're just truly going to see the fruits of your labor. Like your money feels very good. So it's funny when I read that astrology where it spoke really of love. Um, maybe money was a big part of, or maybe just that feeling of independence. So, you know, I like that because think about falling in love after that. Like, okay, I feel like I can take care of myself. So I'm not looking at another, you know, in a way of like, can they take care of me? I can take care of me. Can you take care of you? Hmm, tower. I got it. You're trying to avoid any towers. King of Wands. I just want to follow him. Page of Swords. Wow.
You know, it's interesting because I'm feeling a lot of what I felt in the last reading. And it, number one, it is about overcoming something, you know, that felt like a tower. It was an ending. Um, but maybe I needed to, I need like with the death card, you know, you, you know, allowing it to end it doesn't always have to mean forever. You know what I mean? Let's say someone was just, you know, immature at the time um, and you're evolving. It's very hard to then stay together, but it doesn't mean that that person can't, they themselves evolve. Now, doesn't mean they all do. And I'm going to leave out narcissist on that because I feel like, forget that. You know what I mean? Like, don't think that you can fix. I feel like, I feel like now, if anybody comes into your life, it's like, I don't want to have to fix you. It's not that I wouldn't. But I can see, you know, like, it's almost like if this person comes in with any um, problems. And I feel like naturally you want to help. But yet, I also feel, well, first of all, I don't feel that. I don't feel that they're coming in with problems. That's the thing. This king may have been someone who, part of his own life lessons were to really learn how to communicate. You know, definitely a person of action, but there seems to be something with the words. You know what I mean? Um, but that feels like a personal life lesson. Like, I had to learn to be a better communicator. Um, and probably relating to, like, any committed relationships um, or even yours. But I want to take the romance angels. Look at this. Holy cow. Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. You know, and I'm like, boom. Look at the marriage card. Like, boom. And it's mirroring the nine of pentacles, which is beautiful like independent like trusting within yourself knowing that you have like this ability to create abundance for yourself you know um how great is that that like you learn all that and then you fall in love because boom it feels like it just happens interesting look at this worth waiting for Divine timing is at work in your love life. Look at that. You know, no wonder the marriage card felt so strong. Um, and then, you know, the lover's right there. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when it comes for you? It's coming. But in the same breath, I want to say, like, I hope you are proud of you. Because I feel like there has been, you know, some of it may have been somewhat forced, but transformation, but it's your own growth you know it's almost like you're you know what's that saying um your back was against the wall but out of the blue um just feels it feels kind of magical like everything opening as it sh as it should but that also includes love all right holy cow all right, Scorpio. Sad. 
Sagittarius. All right, I just wanted, I'm changing decks. So I wanted to get the Psychic Tarot ready. And it is ready. All right, let's go ahead and begin with your Major Arcana. I can feel it. We have the world, a new chapter, the next chapter. Um, but look how, how connected it is to divine energy. And then we have High Priestess. You know, interesting because, again, the energy of, it's like, it's almost like she's sprinkling fairy dust. Um, but I feel like it's healing. Hmm. Again, I feel the energy of being true to you. Um, I feel like some of you, again, natural healing abilities. I'm saying natural, but it can certainly be something you also went to school for. Um, but it feels natural, like you're, you're good at it. Even if you're just beginning, um, it just feels right. But I also feel like because it's following the world, um, a couple things. Number one, it's calling for you to really trust within your intuition. And remember, your major arcana is all about divine timing, right? Things happening at the right time, in divine timing. You know, sometimes... Certain things happen beforehand. <clears throat> they just wouldn't be fully right, let's say. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring in a psychic trail. Hmm. Seven of Cups. Choose wisely. That means a question is being posed. Temptation. This is Capricorn. Um, but it can certainly talk about, you know, it definitely wants you to think about, like, well, I feel like I don't want to put a whole lot of you know, I'm noticing the key. There's a key. It's in the dark. But the tip of the key is in the light. And this person has their finger on the light. There again, there's that stream, that little beam of light. So even in your darkest times, I feel like you can find the light. And, you know, definitely be proud of that. You know, it's also knowing one shadow side. And I feel like... Scorpio, you're perfect, or I'm sorry, Sagittarius, you're perfect for that because, um, you know, I don't feel like you overanalyze. All right, well, let's keep going. We have mm, Solitude. It's a hermit. Excuse me one second. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, Anyway, so we get the Hermit, and I have to tell you, I feel like 2025 is naturally going to be the Hermit's energy. Um, I feel like, I definitely feel like you've been doing, you know, what some would call shadow work. Because, you know, again, it's that feeling of knowing oneself. It's interesting. I feel like a lot of these readings are following right what the universal year is asking of. This is definitely going to be a year where you can you can you can uh, connect spiritually. Um, some of you, you know, you may have natural psychic abilities that may come out. I feel like some of you have an interest in like more of mm, the dark realm. 
but yet I feel like you do it out of um, just, I want to know more. And I don't know, like, I feel like there's nothing wrong, or at least my belief is that if there's, you know, our light self, then there's also the dark self. If there are are spirits of the light, then there's also spirits of the dark. Um, But I feel like I I just want to know more. And I and I get this feeling of I want to know more and more and more, you know, and I feel like it's a good thing because, you know, maybe it's exactly what you're meant to do. Just be careful that you don't get pulled too deeply into it. Um, but I feel more is about like opening up these abilities and being comfortable with them. Sorry, it just knows my window is wide open. I'm going to close it real quick. Okay. You have a lot of earth. This may be a time also to um, really make sure you're grounded, especially as it relates to any decisions you're making, especially emotional decisions. Again, a need to trust your intuition. It's like this this old soul wisdom that I feel you already have. And maybe you're learning about it like bit by bit. All right. I'm going to give this a couple shuffles. Hmm, Six of Cups. Well, that's a good time, if nothing else. We have the King of Swords. Can be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, coming over the energy of Capricorn. We have the Three of Wands over the Hermit. You know, it's like the hermit is emerging from the cave. The hermit now carries that beacon of light. And the three of wands to me is a very optimistic type energy. Um, You know, it's when you're following like your major arcana, which really does talk about divine timing. And then the learning to let go, like there's no sense of worrying or trying to control what you cannot control, you know, but. If I, you know, it can also talk about, like, the way you choose to look at things. Um, It's really the energy of, like, just trusting in divine that your ships will come in in their due time. And that's when you, that's when you, yourself, can take the best advantage of it. Again, this three of wands is now mirroring the high priestess, your intuition. And I love it with the hermit because talk about wisdom. Like, you know, some may find this like boring. I find this very, very deep and um, just, ah, just very meant to be. So we got the six of cups over the seven of cups. Six of Cups can talk about someone you already know. This would definitely be someone that, when you think about them, um, they bring a smile to your face. And it's all mirroring your major arcana. So, and I often feel temperance. One, One of her things, one of the things she's doing is she's making sure that both soulmate cups are equally filled. So it's almost like you're meant to have a soulmate in your life. Now, it doesn't always have to be love. It could be like, you know, a really close friend. Um, and, you know, we have more than one soulmate. So know that also. Um, but I feel like, you know. Well, Six of Cups does feel like potentially someone of the past. But it is mirroring a very, again, optimistic energy. 
it's like moving you out of that nine, right? The closing of that chapter. And then bringing yourself to the present moment, just like the world. King of Pentacles, or King of Swords in between that. I'm going to take a couple cards there. We have the Four Swords healing. And then we have the Two of Pentacles. Well, first of all, I don't want you to think that what you've been going through, like for those who've been going maybe through these dark nights of the soul, but you're finding the light. Um, it's because you're, you were strong enough. You know, there's many souls that be like, no way. And you like, yes, I will. Because, you know, your soul knew it would find the light. It's just the human, the human part of us will find the light. But, but I do feel like you do. Now, this king, you know, this healing feels like it's over really everything. And it's interesting because here you're making a decision, like from an emotional level. Here you're making it in a more grounded energy. And that's what I was feeling here, like the earth and major arcana earth. You know what I mean? Like the need to be grounded, especially as it relates to making any decisions. You know, this is not about saying no. This is about living in the present moment and like, you know, it just means that there's, there's things, opportunities, love, it's all coming towards you. And I can kind of let go of the when, the how, but I do feel like, you know, it still puts the ball on your court. And now Though they call this a juggler's card, I feel like this is, first of all, they're balanced. And you don't normally see that. And I feel like balance is probably a big part of this. It's like one right in between the Ace of Swords. Communication. You know. Let me put it this way. For some of you, there could have been elements that tempted you um, more to, like, let's just call um, darker energy. Some of my feel was curiosity. Um, but then I do feel like for a few, there could be, like, something you really felt. Um. Uh, Like I needed. But you didn't. But as you're going through it, I feel like I need it. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I feel like there could have been two who had gone through, like, you know, we started something out of, like, playful energy, and then it turned into something we didn't expect. And you probably both handled it differently. It's interesting. I know that's not going to be for everyone. Um, but I do feel like it's saying this healing was for is for both. And then the Ace of Swords again. You know, Ace of Swords, to me, it is communication. But it's also truth. Okay. I feel like... That's calling for um, a romance angel or whatever comes out. Holy cow. Well, we can't take all that. All right. Mm. We have engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. That's good. 
if that's what you want. Interesting how I said that. And then pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Interesting. Um, I kind of feel that was past. And I feel like I probably ignored that sign. Like a lot of us do. Again, it feels something that started, like, getting playful, that turned, you know, in a way I didn't expect. But that was then. I feel like engagement is talking about right now. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Why? Because I feel like both, especially with your major arcana and the world, that means, first of all, there's got to be balance. I said it in a different reading where it's like that camel that's got to go through the eye of the needle. Um, but also with the high priestess here, like, you know, your intuition and the wisdom of your intuition. So it's like now, if there is a red flag, well, you'd see it all day long. But in a way, I feel for those who like really, you know, let's just say have done shadow work. Um, well, it's like healing. It's it's healing. I mean, who would think that, right? But it is. So I also want to say that. I could definitely see some of you in this type of energy, like following certain whims about, you know, things that you want to do. Um, because you have a lot of wisdom that seems to be like coming to the surface now. You know, it's like, you know, like you watch Jeopardy. And it's like, man, if they just give me a couple more seconds, I would add the answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes my brain a little longer. To bring the correct answer to the front. Not sure why I'm saying that. So, Sagittarius. I, I feel like there's a lot going on this year. Um, but I feel like you already possess the wisdom. You possess it. Um, that's what 2025 is telling you. You already have it. It's about now. You know, I feel like there's no wrong answer here. Um, it's just following your whim, following, just following the energy. Again, I feel like the red flags were, because I feel there's no way, like, you wouldn't see that red flag now. So, you know. I just feel like if anyone tries to come in and they're not, you know, good for you, then immediately, you know, you would be no way. Excuse me. It's amazing how many times I was interrupted in your reading for only what I thought. Like, my door kept popping open. And I'm like, well, that's just weird. Um, then I remember I have the window open and that happened, you know, that cross breeze. Um, then I think, was it Sam? So it's like, okay, I got to stop so I can refocus. But I have to tell you, when I'm being interrupted a lot, I feel maybe you feel that. I always feel like when I'm when I'm in a reading, whatever happens is like meant to happen. It's meant, you know, for some of you, it may like like not allowing interruptions to get in your way. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Your love life. Sending to a high level level of commitment. I mean, think about that. A higher level. 
higher level. And I like this also connecting to the Six of Cups. So no matter, so, so no matter what, that is like playful, um, joyful type energy. It's the way it's meant to be. It can be old memories, but it can be making new memories. You know what I mean? Like, but it's the type of memories like, I don't need a picture. I don't need it written down. It's just there. Um, so, okay. I think I'm going to let that be. Um, I feel like, you know, I feel like it needs reading. You just know where you're at. Um, and by the way, I know I didn't say this in the beginning. I should have. Um, because these, well, I was going to say short, but they're not really that short. You, uh, you may want to check out your moon, um, but also your rising. And that's if you want to. All right. Thank you, Sagittarius. We are moving into Capricorn. Capricorn, I don't know how I missed you last time. Um, but then I ended up doing that reading for you, for just you. And it turned out to be, what, almost two hours. Um, but it was just like packed full. It was a good reading. I remember it. So, I feel like I was meant to miss you. And I'm thinking some of you are like, damn. She remembered us this time. These are still rather long. All right. Capricorn. You know, interesting when I do Capricorn's reading, I often, like, if, if I was blinded to the sign I was doing, I would feel like I was doing a fire sign. I've always felt that about you. Um, and to me, I feel like some of you must be on the... There may be a lot that's on the cusp. Um, that would be what? Sagittarius. Because the other side is Aquarius. Anyway. Um, some of you may just have a lot of fire in your chart. But I feel like you're fiery personalities. Um, and I mean that in a charming way. We have justice. And then we have the will, your destiny. It's got to go. What would bring balance to your life? I feel like, you know, these are just questions you need to ask yourself. I want this wheel to spin. So what do I need to do to get it to spin? And I feel like this is a period of time where you feel more daring, courageous, um, Almost like, I don't know where I want to go, but I know I don't want to be here. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and I know that's not everyone, but I feel that. And I feel it's like, it's just the way it is. Okay. Um... You know, I feel like you're really, you're searching for balance. Um, I feel like, you know, some may call this like, uh, what type of energy, you know, where I want to do what I want to do. Um, but I don't really find anything wrong with that. Um, though some around you may. I want to do what I want to do. You know, I, like, I feel like this sense of, like, I want to seek adventures. 
Tired of the same old, same old. All right. Look at that accelerated motion. She's making a wish upon a star. Make a wish upon a star. Mm -hmm. How do you all? Eight. Accelerated motion. That's what I feel about you. You know, like I want it, I want it now. Um, and you know, she is wishing upon that star. And then we have your destiny right here. So it feels to me like the most important thing. And it's interesting because even the devil's image, his tail is a sword, as is justice. You know, battle between good and bad, right and wrong. Hmm. Okay, we have the waiting game. Well, I feel like you're done with that. Like, don't, oh, it's over. You know, A plus two, it's 10, bring that to a one. And that's what I feel. You are thinking about yourself. Um, and, and I feel like, and I'm making no excuses. Um, and I feel like if you've been like, in any way, in this waiting game pattern, I feel like it's over. I feel like you have that, I don't know what I want to say, like you have that inclination and that's that. Look at this, the four of cups. That's why. Discontentment, boredom in one's life. Over here, I'm making a wish. I'm seeking adventure. There's only one thing is coming between that. And that has to do with this waiting. You know, this four of cups, I'm really kind of turning my world to my back to the world. Um, but normally what you'll see in the four of cups is this person being offered a cup. And I often feel that it's coming from, let's just say, divine itself. Because it really speaks about using your spiritual discernment, you know, as it relates. Um, and I feel like because the wheels, of, and it's, it's like this person's blindfolded. It's like blind faith spinning that wheel. Um, but it had to take some real... Um, realizations truth right justice that's what it stands for the truth you know the truth is the truth is the truth that type of truth you can't deny what you can't and you know i know what i know what i know i may not know how i know it but i know it so you know, in a way, it feels like a, a, like a change of energy, a change of life. It feels quick. It feels sudden. It feels needed. Um, I feel like you have a lot of control over when it begins because, again, you know, some of you... Um, and, you know, the waiting game, we can talk about love, of course. It's right next to the Four of Cups. Um, but whatever it may be, you know, what's stopping you from making your dreams, your wishes come true? Because I feel like when I focus there, well, that's where I see this accelerated motion. I like that. That's the, that's the energy I want to accelerate. That's the energy I want to keep, like, coming back to me. Here, it kind of feels like stuck in the mud. Mm. 
going to give it a couple shuffles. Okay. Two of swords. Mm. Dang. Five of swords over the waiting game. I mean, you can't deny that. Here I am waiting for toxic energy. Someone may have like, you know, cast a spell upon me. Um, so to speak. But it's it worked. Um, but not any longer. Well, we do have the two swords, so, you know, again, you know, I feel like the two swords, because we also have the waiting game as a two, um, it may just talk about, like, you know, and maybe it wasn't a long period of time, like, you know, that you were in this waiting energy, but it, it just doesn't feel right. There's something about it doesn't feel right, like, you know it. Um... Like, it's not even worth you, I feel like, and I guess it's not for everyone, but, you know, I feel like it's not even worth me spending a lot of time, you know, like, analyzing it. It just, ugh. Um, Yeah. Hermit, beautiful, so... You know, let's just call Universal Year 9 the Year of the Hermit. You know, and this hermit, you know, you either see the hermit going into a cave, and that means, you know, I'm still in that dark night of the soul. I'm still seeking, you know, I'm seeking the light. I'm, se I'm seeking, you know, um, wisdom. It can be your higher selves. You know, and I mean that as like, you know, we've been here before, we've done this before. You can overcome this. this and Hermitish is, you know, shining his beacon of light outwardly. And, you know, that may be a symbol. It's like a symbol to the universe. Interesting. It's almost like that's how universal energy picks up when you're ready. It's like when you shine that beacon of light, that means it's time for us to come in. So, you know, you must have had some clarity in between here. Um, and let's go in between. We have, interesting, Five of Cups. Someone that I used to know. And then the Queen of Wands I ain't waiting no more. You know, like I can feel the hardship in this reading, but I can also feel your strength. And like, I feel a sense of, like, you living your truth. And, you know, I don't feel like you're waiting anymore. I don't feel like you're waiting to do anything. You know what I mean? You're following, um, you're following that light. You're following that star. You're believing in fate. And, you know, that's why I feel like she's got this blindfold on, like, blind faith. But I have faith in that, right? Because my intentions are on the star. So that's why I feel like this sword, it had to cut away this fat. You know what I mean? And 
even though, again, we could have been in love. Uh, you know, it's five of cups means it can like it can be someone that I miss. Interesting, it's like connected to the two of swords and the five of swords, though. So I can certainly miss someone that's still not good for me. But let's face it, how many times have I said in the Five of Cups, what it wants you to do is ask yourself, where is your focus? Are you focusing on what you've lost, the cups that have knocked over, the wanting someone to be what they're never going to be? You know, and then jumping into the Queen of Wands energy. Uh, someone who moves according to her passions, her desires, her wisdom. Very psychic. And let's remember what follows with the change of the Five of Cups are soulmates. But they feel like they're coming a long way. Who knows? Maybe that's what one of the cup that's coming in the Four of Cups is. So having the hermit over it and the beacon of light shining outwardly, it may talk about this is a year that you may find like divine love, but you can't you can't be waiting for you know what isn't serving you anyway. You know, don't deny what you know what you know. And trust what you know, what you know, what you know. And I feel like for a lot of you, that's, that's exactly what you're doing. And you could be very abruptly ending something and being like, that's that. I'm going this direction. I'm following this star. This is my star. You know, and it's in the energy of infinity. And I feel like for some of you, one of those wishes were was a cup. You know, I feel like these readings are very spiritual, um, very deep compared to Aries um, through Virgo. Now, theirs were also, but there's there's a different element. Maybe it is a twelve twelve portal. Express your love. Go ahead and make that romantic gesture. Honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Interesting. This may be sooner versus later. You know, it has to be when you're ready. Like, let's say... This cup comes towards you, um, but you don't clear the energy of the past. You don't, like, use that sword. You know, it can be very different. Just remember that, you know. If I carry old energy into my present, then it's going to have an influence over what this can look like. I'm going to take one more. This could be the one. You already met the romantic partner you seek. Huh. Well, you know, I feel like I'm not going to try to dig into that. For those who know, you know. But listen, I feel like this is not talking about if someone's got you like in this waiting pattern. I don't feel like that's that. It's, it's that person. Um. And I also want to say, it doesn't even have to mean that in this lifetime, you know, I could be truly like wishing for a soulmate. And maybe this is the time, you know, because I feel like you're following the natural energy. So maybe this just is the time that the two of you come together. And definitely there would be soul recognition. But I feel like this is saying 
sooner versus later. Mm. You know, and then when I think of honeymoon, I don't like go right, like, I don't automatically think, you know, like engagement, wedding, honeymoon. I think of like the honeymoon period, you know, the the romantic period, you know, make that romantic gesture. And I feel like just as it should be, you should be romanced. And if you're not being romanced, then, then stop, ask yourself, make a decision, go forward or don't. But I feel like this isn't talking to be like, I don't feel like those are the energies you have to worry about. I feel like it's just strictly like clearing of the past using that sword you know, that wisdom, that old wisdom that you have of so much experience and the wheel, your destiny, you know, that tells me this cup coming in is also part of your destiny. So, this could be the one. All right, we'll let that be. I'm moving very slow today. Um, I don't know why. All right. Aquarius. Aquarius. All right, Aquarius. Let's get everything somewhat in order. Um, make sure I have time. All right. Judgment. Judgment, your spiritual team. Blowing the trumpet. Trying to get your attention. Calling you to the present moment. You know, I feel like some of you may have been in like this daydreaming type of energy. And it's like your guides are like, like blowing their trumpet. And you're like, what the hell was that? Taking you out of this dream state. And maybe it's more about like bringing them into reality. Judgment does speak about a rebirth, right? But I guide you through this. And it starts in the beginning. It starts, you know, in the present moment. Hello, lovers. And the magician. Wow. So the magician the mirror, mirror, um, is mirroring the star. You know, the manifester. The magician knows that, like, I have the tools within me to manifest, you know, certain dreams. And bring him into my reality. And I think like that's what judgment is saying to you. Like, like blowing this trumpet at you to get your attention, right? To call you to the present moment. Because who knows, maybe during your daydreaming, like, you know, like judgment is like, you don't have to daydream about it. Like it may actually be happening. Um, but I feel like judgment is also saying, but I need, I need, I need your help, you know, through the magician's energy, right? Like, you know, you have to put those seeds of intention. You know, you got to be what it is that you want. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be what you want. If I want great love, I got to be able to give great love. It doesn't mean I don't have any broken parts. I feel like we all do. Um, and that's okay. 
you know, the lovers can talk about head over heart decision. But I feel like there's a lot of urgency around the lovers. You know, like, and like trying to grab your attention. Okay, let's bring the psychic true. We have the six of swords. Moving on. Hmm, look at this. The Ace of Pentacles. Prosperity begins. Hmm, deception and envy. Wow. You know, not a great energy to have. However, it's mirroring the Six of Swords, which is you not accepting that energy. You know, it's almost like I was with someone else and it was bad. And often I would find myself thinking of, you know, maybe love, maybe a particular person, but I don't want to, I, you know, I'm not going to leave it off the table. Um, but Six of Swords, you have to look back and realize that this person is moving on from really toxic energy. And I love that he's moving right towards the Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles, it means something is coming into your physical world. Um, and I do feel like there's two different hands that's nurturing this seed. And it does need nurturing. That may, that may be another reason my judgment is calling to the present moment. It will need your nurturing. But I feel like you're not nurturing this seed alone. You know, I feel like a seven of swords, deception and envy, right? But it's mirroring the six of swords. So I feel like it's the realization of that. And let's just say whatever it was, right? Untrustworthy energy. Someone who did a lot of lies. It just became toxic to you and your growth. And maybe even bringing your dreams into you. You know, it's like that's what judgment is saying. Like, instead of fantasizing, let's like make it happen. And the Ace of Pentacles is something that is happening. You know, it's something... I feel this ace comes with the roots, which means it's something that can be rooted. You know, and to me that means like kind of like eternity. All right. You know, and I feel like sometimes we got to be careful not to judge. A future love by past love's actions. Because, you know what I mean? Like, let's say someone gave me a reason to be jealous all the time. And, um, you know, I decide to end that. But then I move forward, I meet someone new, and then I become jealous all the time. You know what I mean? It can happen. Um, and that's usually when I'm really not clearing the energy. You know what I mean? Okay, let's keep going. Hmm, death card. Ending. It's a clear ending, though. It's closing of a door, closing of a chapter. Um... It's transformation. You know, it definitely looks like that's what you're heading for is transformation. Card of Scorpio also. Hmm. Emperor. Card of Aries. This is father figure. Um business owner. Leader. This this is someone who leads through experience. You know, like, a lot of times, been there, done that, gone through it myself. I have to feel as if someone is methodical, like, you know, likes to put a plan in place. 
some of you are going to be business ownership yourself, you know, or, you know, um, promotions. You can also talk about if it's love, the type of person. So I would like to see the emperor there because this is someone that um, we look up to. This is someone who, you know, for yeah, better lack of word, uh, has her shit together. Some of you, this person may remind you of your father, but I feel it in a good way. Um, I feel this person feels, even though I feel like grounded in that energy. I also feel the energy of, um, I don't know, like a sense of wisdom, almost like a professor, you know? Um, mm, I don't know. Look at this, two of cups, soulmates. You can't deny, but you can't deny. You know, it's interesting as soulmates is coming over the Seven of Swords. So we can't roll, you know, we can't roll out that someone of the past who um, didn't treat you right was not also a soulmate. Because we do want to remember, like, you know, I feel like there's soulmates that we teach each other in some way. Now, in no way do I feel like you're meant to fix each other. I don't feel that. Not here. Um, but you were meant to experience it. And maybe part of the lesson for you was let, letting go, like not, not allowing like a jealous nature to come out. You know what I mean? Like trusting in the beginning. Um, because I do feel like this is saying that there is another soulmate because it is mirroring the lovers. And this may be your, like, the one that you set down roots with, like true roots, like spiritually, but also earthly. We have the Eight of Cups, so, you know, you're kind of doing what Death Card asks you to. And this person in the Eight of Cups is heading towards the Nine of Cups, it's an inner harmony. Um, you know, it may have talked about, like, a period of time where, I don't know, I feel like in a way, like my emotional, the emotional part of me kept welling up. Um, but this is finding emotional clarity. You know, it doesn't mean that I'm giving up on, you know, like I want loving love. It's not that. It's just that I'm not going to allow, like, the things that didn't work out to take up any space in my new beginning. It is an eight, right? It is like you're giving yourself this new beginning. And then, interesting, the six of cups. So, again, the six of cups. Well, it makes sense with soulmates right there um, because... You know, soulmates are all are soul connected. Like you know each other on a soul level. Um, again, you know, it can be past lives, but it some of you it could be someone you know, because again, I feel like there's someone up here who I feel like they're daydreaming maybe about someone in particular. Um, but I almost feel like your spiritual team is saying, but we need you to help us, like help us help you. <laughs> help us help you. And boy, do they. Let's take one right down the middle there. There's that King of Swords back. Gemini, can be. Here's Gemini right there. Libra, Aquarius. Um, Connecting you, but it could be connecting you. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's almost like someone connecting you to someone. 
that's what it feels like. All of a sudden, I feel like there's someone who is connecting me to another who I feel like immediately there's this feeling. But this closing of the door, this you, you're moving away twice here, right? Once within the swords, the thoughts, even the limited thoughts, and then in the cups on an emotional level, right? Moving to inner harmony. So I feel like that's how it's going to happen for some of you. You're going to meet someone. Someone's going to connect you very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. That's kind of what your spiritual team is saying. Like you're daydreaming, but you dream your day your daydreaming is a little fuzzy. We're not sure what you're asking for. Or if they are sure, then they need your help to manifest. Right? And you're probably your action. And it, you know, it may seem overwhelming. Um, but the truth of the matter is, like, to move into this almost feels like a new life. It does take some bold actions. But I feel like, you know, again, it's just claiming what's yours anyway. I mean that in a destined way. And maybe that's what we're all learning this year. Because it seems to follow the readings um, as being part of the message. But anyways, so you have this soulmate. I feel like you're going to connect somehow. It feels like someone may connect you. Um, may even be through work. But, you know, I kind of don't want to, like, however it happens. Um. You're going to be guided. And I feel like very quickly, you're just going to know. So maybe when you're deciding, clearly deciding what you want, don't put like, you know, don't add in like a bunch of like, you know, look this way and blah, blah. Because remember, um, especially in the, in the romance and the romance angels, one of the cards talks about like, you know, your soul may, may look and be different than what you expect. So just be open. I really feel like that's the thing. Like being open and allowing it. Because it, it just feels like it's going to find you. Okay. I'm going to let that be. We are going to move into Pisces. Pisces, let me check my time. I have time. It's crazy. I, I did not expect um, the readings to be that long. I feel like I want to stay with the Psychic Tarot. But let's go ahead and bring in your major. Well, here's your major arcana. The moon. You know, you are dreamy. You just carry dreamy energy with you. And, um... It's almost like you can't help it. And, but, who would care? Like, why should you help it? We have the devil. Card of Capricorn. Let's see if anything else wants to come out with that. We have the star. Part of Aquarius. 
Interesting how the devil is in between you and the star. Um... It's almost like between you and your dreams. Hmm. You know, let's not forget the devil can talk about temptation. He can talk about illusionary energy. Um, there are going to be some people who are really good with like giving off a, like illusionary energy. Like I pretend like you know, like, I wear a false mask, I act this way, but really I'm this way. Hmm. All right. We have intuition. Sacrifice. Mental conflict. It's interesting how the two twos they're mirroring these two twos are mirroring each other. And one is your intuition, which is usually pretty clear. And it doesn't mean I know everything, it just means I know enough to take a step forward versus this mental conflict. It's the opposite energy. I am not trusting my intuition. I don't want to take off a blindfold. I don't want to face the truth. Maybe something does need to be sacrificed. Again, I do feel like the devil's coming between you and your dreams. Um, and it couldn't talk about, like, you know, what do you feel? And maybe I don't want to face that. I feel like I have to. If I want something to come true, I grab a drink. You know, the Two of Swords talks about a blindfold um, that I wear because I just may not want to face something, you know, face a fact, face a truth. Um, but it really doesn't serve me to wear it because it can certainly block opportunities. Like I, I could definitely say no to something, but again, it'd be because like I'm more in my head where your intuition is like, like more trusting within energy. Remember Pisces, you're naturally a psychic sign. So allowing yourself to feel that and trust that. You have three twos in your spread out of three cards. They all have a two in them. I just find that interesting. Some of you may have personal year two, a life path two. And, you know, that's often when we do start thinking of love. But not any old love, you know, often a soulmate type love. You know, when I evolve, so does the energy around me. And, and the energy that doesn't evolve starts to feel like, you know, it doesn't belong. Like it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I feel like, you know, universally, like that energy is being eclipsed out of your life, faded out. But our humanness sometimes pulls it back in. This time, I feel like I just got to let it go. Just 
justice. Hmm. Cutting ties. Finding balance. There does feel like there's something coming between you and your dreams, but it feels like it's it's up to you. Um, I guess, first of all, to face it, know it, and then to take the action of using the sword to, like, cut those ties. Um, you know, it's like, bring you right to your dreams. Justice means balance is possible. You know, I feel like once the sword is used... It automatically balances you. You know, just automatically a sense of feeling whole again. So you're feeling your natural self. Two of Wands. Starting a new path. Look at that. Four Swords. You know, I kind of feel like Part of this energy where it feels like I may be in my head, but in a way that feels like it's kind of limiting me, but it almost feels like it's not even my thoughts. Um, maybe those thoughts were put in my head. I don't know. Um, but I feel like I have to see that because here's an opportunity not to only see it, but to heal it. And I like that because we have the um the high priestess your intuition so it's nice and clear as it should be and then the two of wands is like the willingness like to go on this new adventure but yeah something needed sacrificed and you know i feel like this is not about like healing from something and taking time out. I feel like I'm still going on this adventure. It's like you had a change of mind. Look at that, the three of wands, optimism. Optimism, present moment energy, trusting in divine timing. You know, that's what the three of wands is saying. Like, I trust the divine will bring my ships in. You know, in their due time. Not only stepping upon a path, but it's like being excited, being optimistic, like feeling it. Age of Swords. You know, it feels like communication is different. Interesting that it's the Page of Swords who is also connected to this healing because I feel for a lot of you, it's your inner child. It's your inner child that took on a lot of this, you know, like within your thought system. Um, more like, you know, beliefs that could have been put there from others that you took on. You know, you won't be successful, you can't be successful, you know. You're a hopeless romantic. You're never going to find what you're looking for. But they're wrong. They're wrong. But you got to know that. And that's kind of what the high priest is being the first card with the moon right above it. The moon can certainly talk about uncertainties. Um, but your intuition will guide you. I mean, that's just that. I'm going to take one right in the middle. Look at this. The full. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. But, you know. Yes, I had to sacrifice something. Something was standing between me and my dreams. And, you know, I don't feel like it's a one thing. I feel like it's like the, t the way you want to live your life. This is really free and clear energy. This is letting go of the past. This means the blindfold has come off, right? Face the truth. Did what I needed to do. I'm trusting in blind faith, trusting in divine. 
my intentions are my wishes. And all I need to do in the fool's energy is take a leap of faith. And it's showing you do you doing that. Um I feel like you know, whatever lies ahead here. First of all, it feels like you're being guided and it feels like your energy feels free. So like the guidance feels so much easier to receive. You're not in your head anymore. You're believing in you. You're following, you know, what it is you feel is going to bring you fulfillment. Cutting ties to, you know, what you kind of know, what you kind of know you needed to anyways. And then you're starting anew, but not just that. You're also healing. But I feel that healing is really more in the mind. Um, because in a way, I feel like once I clear a certain energy, I just automatically feel like I want to go. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Feels like maybe that would shut down. Like you weren't in a very playful state. Make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take, make the effort. What does that mean? That means that you will have an opportunity to make the effort. You know, as you yourself bring you yourself into the fool's energy, you know, and allow, it feels like, because the fool's a very playful type energy also. Um, but, it, it kind of feels like the romance is happening. It feels playful. It feels romantic. And it's telling you it's great love. You know, be what it is that you want. And then watch it come true. But you got to be there. You got to be it. You got to know it. You got to know what's standing between you and what it is you want. You know what I mean? And how it is you want to live your life. Um, you know, and yes, there may be some things you got to sacrifice. There may be people. But this isn't about nothing. This is about you following, like, your guidance, what feels like a divine path, to be honest. Um... And I feel like anything I had to sacrifice or anything I've gone through, I'm really also healing from this. You know what I mean? It's like the more clarity I find, the sooner I heal. And it may be clarity that helps you heal. No judgment. Right? Just jump into the fool's energy. That means, you know, I'm willing to take a, a, a leap of faith, a chance. Let's see where it goes. I feel like you're ready for this adventure. I feel like you're ready. And who knows, some of you, maybe this is what you're manifesting. So you want to begin, be what you want. Be what you want. Be open. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think I got everyone. So, wow, Pisces, what a reading for the last reading. Um, you know, and it makes sense because, again, going into Universal Year 9, it really is calling on our spirituality, um, on our ability to heal, and so that we can help others heal. You know, I mean, not everyone, but many and, you know, you automatically have those psychic abilities. Look at these twos 
right across here. I can see you like manifesting a relationship. You know, but not any old relationship. And listen, manifesting in a universal year nine, I feel like what does that bring you? You know, someone who feels wise has a lot of like spiritual wisdom. You know, let's just say up your alley. All right, guys, I'm going to let that be. Um, thank you. I love you. Um, I, again, will connect the other video, which talks about the Universal Year 9 for the collective. Again, it's only like eight minutes long. Um, it's really just me, at, like in a podcast, I'm really just talking. But it's some good information. Um and it's just the beginning. I'm going to keep adding to it because, like, I could just keep keep getting, like, like epiphany after epiphany after epiphany. And I'm writing it down. And so I'm going to do, like, I'm going to make it a series. I'm going to talk about it more. I just want you to be ready for 2025. Anyways, guys, I love you. I thank you. I shall see you all next time at our table. Bye-bye.